Hi, my name is Janiel. Welcome to Culture Trekking, where I try to collect unique stories from around the globe that focus on sustainable adventure and cultural connections. I call Utah home, but today I am taking you to the southern coast of Maine. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am out here with Visit Maine at the Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens seeing this troll exhibit. This is the start of a three-day road trip down the southern coast of Maine. I cannot wait to take you with me, but first, let's go find these trolls that took over 400 hours per troll to make by a guy who took discarded wood and created these tall trolls to remind us to treat nature kindly. Coastal Maine Botanical Gardens opened in 2007. It now is the largest botanical garden in New England with 295 acres, 17 of which show native plants from Maine as well as a children's area that is very interactive. There are over 200,000 guests throughout the United States and 63 foreign countries that visit every year. The trolls are considered guardians of the seeds and this is their story. Somewhere between the mountains and the rocky coast lies a forest of pristine green forgotten by most. Deep in this forest, a secret place with 10 golden seeds at the end of a maze. They were hidden by five giant trolls protecting each part of the forest so old. It was told that the trolls spoke the tongue of the trees and had sworn to protect them from war and disease. Burke has had roots, Ravasco was wide as a trunk, Grow was like the leaves at breathing life with her lungs. Seren, like beech branches, would wave in the wind, and Lujan, like flowers, each year would spring. The forest was ancient, had stood for millions of years, but recently the trolls had seen just what they'd feared. Little people came plenty across over the seas to cut, fell, and break down tree after tree. So in a fear of day, when all the trees would be gone, they collected every seed forever and on. Chestnut, cherry, elm, spruce, and hazel, oak, ash, beech, birch, and last a little maple. The five trolls then held around all the seeds and harder and harder, and they started to squeeze. So hard that the stars started flashing and shaking, so hard that the ground started numbling and quaking. Then ten golden seeds appeared in a haze. The trolls took them and hid them in the end of a maze, where in secret safe all the trees could grow tall, because a future with no trees is no future at all. So the question is now, do you want to help? Because a secret is lost if kept to itself. Please run find seas and hold them in your heart. And if everything gets lost, you'll know where to start. So if you come out to the botanical gardens and you find all the trolls, fill out the little clue, you'll find where this spot is, where all of these seeds of the forest that you usually find in Maine are collected by these trolls next to this giant 200 year old pine tree. Definitely worth a stop out here. Very educational and a great place to teach your kids how to respect nature. Next up, it was time to head to my B&B &B by the Bay, Harbridge Inn. That garden was incredible. I recommend that you spend a full day exploring the garden to do it properly. Now, I am checking in to a Harbridge Inn here in Booth Bay. What a view. And in the morning, I get to eat breakfast on my private patio. So excited. Let me show you the room. This is 
is where I get to sleep tonight, guys. Like what? Cute little bathroom. Oh, hey. AC and the fridge with some coffee. So they even have this hot tub, guys. I'll be there in just a minute, overlooking the bay, right after I finish my dinner. One thing you should know about me is that I would never pass up a chance to go sit in a hot tub that overlooks a bay. Steamy 102 degrees, and I am in heaven. <sighs> One happy girl. Guys, she made me sleepy time tea. I've literally never felt this posh in my whole life. Like, cheers. <laughs> After a great night's sleep, it was a quick jet over to Portland to go on a foodie tour with some classics from Maine. Ooh. It's like a ginger drink. It's really good. First off, check a look at the sidewalks. Just these look super flat. The only thing that will be really flat is Commercial Street. Reason is, is this is completely redone since I was a little kid. When I was a little kid, there were 10 train tracks that went across. And where you're standing right now, you would be in 38 feet of water. Even though it looks like it's solid ground underneath, almost like Venice, are pylons that are holding everything flat. So another reason why everything's kind of ripply down here, over 150 years, the ground is settled. So we're gonna head this way. When I grew up in the 70s, the harbor was completely polluted. Also down here, it was nothing but canneries and fish factories, it stank. It was awful. No one wanted to live down here. And then the smell during the summertime would just go right over the peninsula. So the whole town smelled like a tuna can. And people just didn't want to live, you know, live down here. But right around the in the early 70s, they started cleaning up the harbor. So by the 80s, it didn't smell anymore. And they had covered all the cobblestone so it didn't wreck your car driving down Congress or Commercial Street. Maine has a 10 foot tidal difference between high tide and low tide. We have a chunk of the Berlin Wall. All right, so remember how I said how polluted the harbor used to be? Look at the end of this boat. There are literally thousands of little fish. This became a rookery. All the big fish lay their eggs underneath the piers and it's a safe spot for all the little fish. You know, like Finding Nemo. <laughs> we're going to Gilbert's Chowder House and we're gonna try some of their world famous chowder. This chowder house has been here for almost 20 years. It's won many accolades and uses its own seafood clam haddock chowders to steal the show, as well as making its own stock. We're not like any other place beach-wise in America. Our coast is all inlets, rocky. We don't have a whole lot of traditional sandy beaches. And if you notice, everything's sort of lined up. The reason why it's lined up is during the last ice age when the glaciers pulled back, it scraped our entire coastline. And our coastline is so long, if you stretched it out into one line, 7,441 miles. So basically from Tijuana, Mexico to Vancouver, British Columbia. Jason with a G suggested that I get the seafood chowder because that is their signature chowda and inevitably of course i spilled all down the front of me anybody else have that problem let me know in the comments below seafood, seafood. seafood. look at this chunk of lobster i like can't even get it on my spoon it's so big let's just say i snarfed that thing down pretty quick it was delicious this bad boy right here is a lobster trap has anyone ever seen a lobster trap before so a lobster trap is, is basically a giant roach motel. So <laughs> the lobster checks in, but he can't check out. If the bait box 
empties out and there's more than one lobster, lobsters are like cannibals. They'll attack each other and nobody wants a lobster on their plate with a big chunk taken out. So, you know, that motivates them, it turns into a lobster thunderdome in here. Next was Andy's Old Port Pub, where they gave us some stout beer and some classic haddock tacos. Who doesn't love tacos? Jason continued to show us around town all the little knickknacks and things that make Maine and Portland, Maine the foodie hotspot that it is. We headed over to McGritty's for a classic Maine lobster roll. I seriously could not get enough of these things. And also some delicious blueberry beer. Maine is definitely an upcoming foodie hot spot with plenty of trifles and treats for all to try. Perfect ending to a perfect tour. The, I got the Maine moonshine. Mm. Really subtle. Creamy. Really good. After the foodie tour, you're definitely gonna wanna take a walk around the historic Portland, Maine town. There are plenty of little shops that are environmentally friendly and dog friendly. The cutest dog in this shop. I just wanted to bring my own puppies. Isn't he so cute? And then I just kind of wandered. I love doing that in this city where I found the coolest sustainable bag shop. These bags are made out of recycled old sails. They're called sea bags and they have some pretty nifty designs. It just doesn't feel right if you're visiting the coast of anywhere without getting some good ice cream. I got the sea foam and the sea biscuit. The sea foam has this unique freeze-dried molasses, which molasses is a staple, not just for Canada, but also for Maine. Oh, so good. Another classic treat that is unique to Maine is called the whoopie pie. Basically, it's like two pieces of cake with some frosting in the middle. I was so full though, couldn't even get it down. Saved it for later. With the gorgeous weather in Maine, it was time for a trolley tour with Portland Discovery Land and Sea Tours. It feels so good to just sit down for a minute after walking all day today. I am headed out on a trolley tour of Portland, Maine, the historic parts of Portland, Maine, to learn a little bit more about this city the history here, the people that made it what it is today. And I'm really excited to just learn a little bit more about this totally underrated state. I already know that I'm gonna be coming back here because the people are so nice. This town is totally my vibe. You can feel that there's a lot of history here and uh, we're gonna learn more of that today. Hey! We are surrounded by water on three sides of our peninsula. Up there is the Costco Bay. This is actually the four river. It hooks up to the Costco Bay. And the river goes all the way around the city, making this like a C shape. And it's a peninsula, and the Indians call us Mashagon, which means goose's neck. And we do not freeze in the winter. We're open year round. Canada locks up solid. So that's another huge advantage. The ships come in here and they put their stuff on railways or trucks to Montreal, which is just a hop and a jump that way. But if you were to take it by land, by water, you got to go all the way to Halifax, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, all the way up top, and then enter the St. Lawrence, and then come all the way back down to right here. And the St. Lawrence freezes during the winter. So they built the railroad back here in the 1600s, connecting this port to Montreal. We basically support Canada in the winter. That's one reason why we're so popular. Uh, plus, we're certainly love it. So anyhow, we came here in the 1600s, right? We've been settled here since 1632, 400 something years. Of course, the natives didn't like us. They kicked us out and they burned us to the ground. We left. Came back about 50 years later. We settled again. We did pretty good, but then sure later we made them angry and they burned our forts to the ground again. Okay, then we came back. And this time we settled and we stayed quite a while. Up until like 1775, the British, right? The American Revolution. 
The British wanted us. They came in here in 1777, Navy British ships, burned the city to the ground again. But we rebuilt. Fourth time, we got tired of nobody else was doing it, so we figured we'd burn the city down ourselves. <laughs> and we did. So there was a couple kids, the 4th of July said after the Civil War, the first big holiday after the 4th of July, playing with firecrackers, go figure, at a lumber yard. Look at Smack. Started a fire at the lumber yard and it raged the entire city, two thirds of the city to the ground. So four times burned to the ground. We like our fire departments, and uh, if anything you want to guess, there's going to be tests now. You guys thought it was going to be easy. It's not all fucking games, there's going to be quizzes. Put it this way, when in doubt, answer C, fire. So it's pretty good, all right? But uh, what do you think our logo is? Some animal, some bird, fire, phoenix. There you go, thank you. Newspaper named phoenix, one of these trolleys is named phoenix. Rise from the ashes, the Latin term for the city here is resurgum, rise again. So this is a 105 minute fully narrated trolley tour. And it takes you throughout the city, points out Civil War era forts, lighthouses, Henry Wadsworth and Longfellow home, the Victoria mansions, the bustling old port, how it used to be, takes you past Casco Bay, which is the oldest bay in Maine, and then talks about how Maine was the biggest producer of rum and molasses um, it talks about prohibition the main observatory from 1907 and so many more things the guy is actually really hilarious so this is the third oldest lighthouse in the whole country and one of the few that you can actually walk up to and touch From the Henry Wadsworth Longfellow poem, who was a local to Maine, sail on, sail on ye stately ships, and with your floating bridge and ocean span, be mine to guard the light from all eclipse. Be yours to bring man near unto man. After the trolley tour, it was a posh dinner at Via Vecchia an Italian seafood-inspired restaurant here in Portland, Maine. This bartender was amazing and really put on a show for the guests. In fact, there was someone there next to me that was secretly scouting him for another restaurant. Time to go to Higgins Beach, an 1897 colonial revival-style building that is about 20 minutes south of the Portland Head Lighthouse. So this is where I'm staying tonight. Just a cute little main cottage near the ocean. Standard bathroom. And I like all of the old advertisements here in my room. They do have a restaurant on site as well as breakfast is included and it's only about two and a half blocks from Higgins Beach. Good morning everyone! Breakfast was delicious at the Higgins Beach Inn and I drove an hour up from Scarborough to a gun quit. Oh gun quit. I had to get some direction from some locals for that name, which you'll find it's hard to pronounce a lot of them up here. But I am here in a gun quit because I am going on a, a lobster tour with Fine Lobster Tour. Now, a gun quit isn't just about lobster sailing and the beach. They actually have a giant three mile walkway that is a classic thing to do when you're visiting this area. So let's get started on our journey through this quaint little coastal main town and see what there is to see. A gun quit actually means a beautiful place in Native American language. It is one of the prettiest places in the southern coast of Maine. It is has a relaxed feel and the people are very kind. The parking can get a little precarious, so make sure to get there early and bring some cash for parking. Lobster rolls can be a bit pricey, but it is definitely worth it for the amount of lobster that you get in your lobster roll. So you'll never guess how much this lobster roll is. This, $27. This is $27. And 
The reason it's so expensive is because when COVID hit, the demand for lobster went way down. So the companies are really trying to revamp and and um, pay those bills back that they weren't able to, able to pay during the pandemic. So now we still have the delicious lobster, but just plan for it to be a bit more expensive. Um, I like helping local communities, and so being here and supporting uh, a captain directly, it really does the heart good and the stomach. Mm. I'm gonna miss this. So worth it. In the 1700s, the colonists of this area uh, would have uh, been able to grab lobsters right off the shore uh, after storm. Uh, after storms, they would have washed up reportedly and piled uh, up to two feet tall. The locals would have come down with buckets and scooped them up and then ground them up to use as a fertilizer. Uh, otherwise, they would have been fed to prisoners, slaves, and servants in the chief food stores. It wasn't until around 1860 that lobsters started to be canned uh, to be used as a cheap ration during the Civil War. And then after the war, all of this canning, uh, canneries and all the canning infrastructure in Maine uh, continued producing lobster. To protect the population is with the uh, conservation measures like the V-notch law and the size requirements. Uh, every lobster in the state of Maine has to be measured to make sure that it meets uh, a minimum of three and a quarter inches and a maximum of five inches from the eye socket to where the carapace meets the tail section. Uh, additionally, if a lobster is found with eggs with tail, uh, with, excuse me, with eggs in its tail section, uh, it's going to be marked with the second fin from the right uh, with this V-notch here. That mark is going to indicate that it is capable of producing eggs and has to be thrown back. Uh, we want to be able to identify and protect the egg-producing lobsters because half of all lobsters uh, are infertile. We ban the claws to protect ourselves, but also to protect the other lobsters. Uh, they are cannibalistic in captivity, although in the wild they don't tend to eat each other. It was fun to learn about the biology of the lobsters, a lot of which I was surprisingly did not know. And it was really cool to see one of the last remaining bridges or hand-raised bridges in the U.S. If you want to bring along your furry friend, they do have a tour where you can bring them as well as do some wine tasting, see the lighthouses, and a lot more things. After the tour, it was back onto the Concord coach lines for my bus ride back to Boston, where I will stay overnight and then head out the next morning. It was a cheaper option for me, so don't feel like just flying into Portland, Maine is your only option. The King's Suite. Fun fact about me, I've never actually stayed in a suite, so this is pretty neat. I'm a poet, I didn't even know it. So I just broke that seal, but this is the King Premium Suite. Look at the views, I'll show you those in just a second. But this is the room. It connects right into the bathroom, which then leads you back out into the sitting area. Pretty cool. Oh, and here are the views. Wow, I feel so fancy. <laughs> well, that concludes my video on road tripping down the coast of Maine. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the places that I visited, where I stayed, or the things I ate, please leave them in the description box down below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with a friend because more the merrier. See you in the next one, y'all. Bye.